Hello, my name is Maria Miller from MathMammoth.com. In this video I want to talk to you about multiplying fractions by whole numbers. And while it is a fairly easy topic, we need to combat a certain misconception that students often have. And let's look at that first. For example, let's say we have 4 times 2 thirds, and the student, if he doesn't remember, might think, well, this is how we do it, 4 times 2 and 4 times 3. But that cannot be so, because if you remember how to do equivalent fractions, like I have taught in another video and in my book, this, if we want to make an equivalent fraction, we can, for example, split each piece into four new pieces. We would multiply the numerator and denominator by four, and we get eight over 12. This is an equivalent fraction. It's the same amount of pi to eat here as here. And see, we multiplied this number by four and this number by four. So surely, if we want to find 4 times 2 thirds, it cannot be this way. Okay, and to find out how it is, how it is done, students can actually discover this themselves. You don't need to give them the rule. For example, here's an example. If we need to find out what is 4 times 2 thirds, we could color 2 thirds. And then repeat this process 4 times. Another 2 thirds, I color this third and this third another two-thirds, and then lastly one more two-thirds. So I've colored four times two-thirds, and how much did I color? I have two whole pies and two-thirds, but I also have eight-thirds. You have three and three and two-thirds, you know? Eight-thirds or two whole pies and two-thirds, okay? And let's, you, you can let students do similar exercises with a visual model a few more. Color four times three fifths. You know, I color three fifths. And then the second batch of three fifths. And the third batch of three fifths. And my last batch of three fifths. So what did I get? I get two and two fifths, okay? Two and two fifths. But at the same time, I colored twelve fifths, right? Or color seven times two twelfths, you know, two twelfths. Another, third time, fourth time, fifth time, and sixth time, and seventh time. And you can count how many twelfths you have. You have twelve here and two more, so it is fourteen twelfths, or one whole pie and two twelfths. It is very easy to see that what you actually do as a shortcut is you multiply this whole number times the numerator. And then the denominator stays the same, because they are 12 parts. It is kind of like 7 times 2 parts. So you get 14 parts, and the parts happen to be 12. So using that shortcut, now we are ready to solve problems without a visual model. So here is 8 times 3 fourths. Simply multiply 8 times 3, 24. And the denominator doesn't change. 24 fourths. This one simplifies to just 6. The same works even if the whole number is here last and the fraction is first, because multiplication is commutative. You can switch the order of the numbers in a multiplication problem. So we still go 5 times 2, or 2 times 5 is 10, and 15 doesn't change. This one can be simplified then to 2 thirds. Now, working with recipes is a nice application of this topic. You just have some kind of a recipe, and then you ask the students to make a double batch or, or triple batch or whatever, if the recipe has to be cooked four times, something like that. For example, this one is part of the list of ingredients for um, curry, curry chicken. And it has other ingredients too, but they are like whole numbers, like one onion or whatever, so I didn't write them here. And we could maybe ask that it needs to be doubled or made three times. Let's say we need to do it three times. So then we need to think, okay, three times this, three times this, three times this, three times this. And when it comes to mixed numbers, you might think that, well, they haven't learned that yet. But it's not that difficult, because three times one and a half, you can think three times one, which is 3, and then 3 times half, 
which would be three halves. So you would get three and three halves, right? And then that from here we can get one whole, you know, so it changes to four and a half. This number here will be again four and a half, the same, four and a half teaspoons. This number here times three, three times one third would give you one cup. And then three times one fourth will be three fourths. Teaspoons, cups, teaspoons and so on. Anyway, I just wanted to point out that most recipes that have actually fractional quantities and doubling, tripling them is just a nice application. Lastly, I want to show you something kind of interesting. Here on this side we have one third times five and on this side we have five times one third. Now obviously we're going to have the same answer whether we do this or this, right? But let's compare the interpretation of this, the meaning of this and the meaning of that. One third times five. This times basically can be taken to mean of, if you have a fraction here. So one third of five. Maybe I have five pies and I want to take one third of it. One third part of this whole thing. Maybe I have five pies and three guests and I need to, or I want to divide these evenly by three This is in a sense, this is the same problem as 5 divided by 3, because I want to find one third part of 5. And in the picture you would see that everybody would get one whole pie. If I have three people sharing this, everybody would get one whole pie, and then these two pies we need to divide between three people, so each one, each one would get one third and one third, right? Or I could show it this way. This much would be one third part of five. And then the second third would be this, and then the last third part would be this, okay? So what we see here is one and two thirds. On this side, five times one third, we can interpret that as meaning five copies of one third. So I just drew one third, one third, one third, one third, one third, one third five copies of it. And then if we put this together, and of course these here would make one pie and then I have two thirds. So I get one, two thirds either way. But it is a nice connection to think about.